Hey, Reese's Pieces, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? You know, those videos where the women like say, get ready with me and all that. So I'm not fully doing one because I'm already dressed as you can see, but I'm still putting my makeup on and I'm gonna talk to you guys real quick um, about what I've been doing over the past couple of days um, while I put on my makeup. So um, yesterday, my husband and I, we went to um, a preparatory school in, um, gosh, in the, I'm going to say it was near the central region of Ghana. Um, and the name of the location, I always say it wrong. I can see it in my head, but I'm going to say it's Ashalaja. I think that's Ashalaja. I think that's how you say it. And, um, I, uh, went yesterday and we went to read to the children. Of course, we're representing Reese Mensa Foundation. Shout out to my girl Shay, who, uh, Nanaya, who is the teacher of that particular grade. There is, it's, it's a, uh, elementary school. It's a very tiny one. And the people who, um, run it is a husband and wife, uh, team. And let me tell you something about these people. They built this school in their backyard. They have a house, very humble people. And uh, they also use the building, I think they use it sometimes for uh, church. Um, but yeah, so they um, invited us out and we read to the kids and yeah. And so it was a lot of fun. And um, they were so, so smart and so cute. So like I said, we went to go read to the kids. I read to the kids. And um, it was so cute because they were just so, like I said, extremely intelligent, these kids were. And although we understand that there are certain languages that are um, spoken in each household here in Ghana, uh, depending on which tribe you're from, um, English is the primary language of Ghana, West Africa, and then tree. So most people do speak English, uh, but tree is really the language, if you will, of Ghana, but uh, English is spoken uh, more widely. Um, there are lots of people actually who are from different tribes who don't even speak tree. So tree is not, you know, the national language, but it's one of the primary languages. So um, the really great part about yesterday was knowing that what the headmistress and headmaster want to do is they want to teach their kids to speak English. So in their, while they're in class, all they speak is English. It was great. So great for me because they knew English. And, you know, when the kids are younger, um, they tend to uh, pick up a little bit quicker, you know, than if you're an adult trying to learn. It just, it is what it is. Uh, kids pick up like that. These kids were so, so, so talented, so smart. It was just crazy. Um, and so read to them and I got the opportunity to meet with the... Um, the headmaster, um, which is, again, a husband and wife team and, uh, you know, the head, the mistress. And, oh, my gosh, these people were so wonderful. So wonderful. Again, shout out to my girlfriend, Shay, uh, for inviting me up. And um, I got to talk with them. And we went over all the things that they were looking for um, to achieve in their school. And they're in the process of actually building another section so they can have more of a community space um, and have uh, families to come out. Because what happens is, um, it's a private school, so they have to pay um, to send their kids to school. And unfortunately, as you probably are fully aware, a lot of people cannot afford to send their kids to school. The great thing I heard about this school was they provide scholarships. They said, you know, there are times where kids will not show up for school. And they'll be like, okay, well, where is the child? And if the child's been gone for a couple of days, they will go to their house. They, that sounds like something I would do. They will go to their house and they will actually find the kids, go talk to the parents and say, listen, I know you can't afford to be here, but I need you to come to school anyway. So uh, I talked with them. We went over some of the things that they needed for the school. And um, what was really great was um, the curriculum. These kids were two years old and could write, read and write at two. Yeah. They start, they have a nursery. 
And then they have a classroom where, you know, it reminds me, I'm gonna tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of, um, if you've ever watched Little House on the Prairie, Little House on the Prairie had um, one teacher and several grades in one room. So there were several grades in each classroom um, that was there. So there was a nursery and the nursery had the babies that were like two and three years old, uh, like I said, who were uh, learning to read and write at two and three. Um, and then they, the second class, which was Shay's class, um, there were kids that were from kindergarten up to sixth grade, just like Little House on the Prairie. It was crazy. Um, and it was so cute to see um, how the kids, uh, she was showing me the curriculum and some of the things that they're working on. And it was so cute to see how the kids just gravitate to the work and how they so today I am getting ready. You like my cute little bag? Isn't she cute? Oh my word. I found this at a place in uh, where I live. It's called, um, oh gosh, my daughter takes me there all the time. And basically it is Amazon stuff that was returned. Pretty much. And they get it, I guess, at pennies on the dollar. They get it shipped there and, they, and you just, they just put it on tables and you just go through it. Right, it's crazy. Um, but this is the cutest thing, it's actually a thermos. Well, not thermos, a, um, you see that in there, it keeps stuff cold. Um, right now I just have my medicine and stuff in it um, and you know, other little things. But yeah, it is so cute. But when I'm here in Ghana, I actually leave this here and uh, I'm gonna take it back with me because I'm gonna use it as a lunch bag. Um, but uh, when I'm in Ghana here, where I'm here now, um, I we, we travel, Traveling, when you go from one place to another, it is a journey. Just going from our community to Accra is a journey. And what would take roughly 20 minutes where I live to go from here to Accra takes an hour or so. It's crazy. And that's because of the traffic. So I am today, I am on my way. I'm spending some time with my auntie now. If you guys saw the video, I uh, probably posted already. I can't remember if I did or not. I probably did, but it was her birthday and we had so much fun and you know, you dance here. And she turned, how how she 50 something. I can't remember how it shows she was. So um, anyway, so there was a party for her and we went to that. So t she's been talking to me since she got here. Um, she lives in the UK, so she's been saying, you know, my Mincy Ma, Mincy Ma, I need you to come and go to the beach with me. So guess what? Today we are going to the beach. So I have my bag packed to go. I have my oh, I gotta go grab my my um, my um, towel. Almost forgot that. But I have my little bag in here. I have an extra dress to change into because the mosquitoes, right? Um, I have my swimming suit. I've got extra toilet paper. If you know Ghana, you bring extra toilet paper in case, you know, we're going to the beach. I have um, sunscreen. I have another lotion. I have deodorant. And this is imperative. This is one of the best um, uh, uh, mosquito uh, repellents in Ghana. It is called Medisoft. And listen, it comes in two different uh, scents and I swear by this. I never get bit when I, when I wear this, never. So I already put it on and then I have extra to take with me. Of course, the trusty sunglasses, you gotta have those. Um, and then of course I have my towel I'm about to put in my so bag. So I got my towel. towel. And um, I actually bring towels with me. I pack them and put in my suitcase coming from the States. Um, and I bring lots of towels because I like a good soft, uh, you know, thirsty towel and it's hard to find here. Um, they're really good towels and if you do find them, they're overpriced. So I uh, bring, everything is overpriced if it is imported here, like completely overpriced. So guys, come along with me um, and um, let's go to the beach. And also just want to remind you guys before we make our journey to the beach, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And also please go to our GoFundMe page and uh, please donate. Uh, we are doing a now another campaign for this preparatory school. So, all right, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach, yay. <laughs> and we are headed to the beach. Let's go. That's it.
like I said. There's auntie, and there's other auntie. Say hey. Hi. We're going to the beach, guys. Yeah. And there's our driver. I'm driving him crazy because, you know, it's a Ghana car. And he needs to get his service. He needs, we're gonna believe God that he gets the money to get this service so he can be safe in this car. But this is Ghana, so we're on our way to the beach, guys. Woohoo! <laughs> That's why I'm laying down. I've taken a shower. Um, my husband went to go grab our food and I am going to sleep like a baby. Being out there in the elements like that, walking in the sand, you know, sand walking ha takes a toll on your legs. It really does. So walking the sand, everything just being around, um, you know, nature and everything. I'm watching the birds and I fed a cat. Um, as you guys saw in the video, I, I fed a cat who reminds us of the cat that we had uh, that died. So. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, following with me. Uh, don't forget again to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.